I'm Master Cicerone Mirella Amato, and this is my friend Matt. Hi. Matt has 10 years experience in the restaurant and service industry. But more importantly than that, I am also a lover of beer. Aren't we all? Yes, that's why everyone's here, honey. So in this YouTube series, Matt and I are going to be playing with foam. Foam party. In the next few videos, we will be reviewing the gadgets that are in the corner mm -hmm. here, each of which was designed to improve the beer foam experience. Yes, and I'm very curious to see how this improves the beer foam experience because I'm getting a different vibe. Well, if like Matt, you're interested to find out more about these gadgets, make sure you don't miss the upcoming videos by subscribing to my channel. Right there. Subscribe. Do it. Get into it. All right, so since we're not um, talking about the gadgets just yet, um, what are we going to be focusing on today? Well, for this video, Matt, I thought we'd do a little bit of science. Okay. Starting with the basics. So what can you tell me about foam, Matt? It's foamy. Um, it's pretty. Ah, well, not as pretty as you. Thank you. Uh, so let's get back to the beer here. You can see if you look into this beer that there are carbonation bubbles escaping from the beer to create that foam. But what you can't see is that the beer also has some hydrophobic compounds in it. <laughs> Did you just come for me? Hydrophobic. That means that uh, it doesn't want to be in the liquid. So these hydrophobic compounds come from the barley and the hops, and they latch onto those bubbles, creating a membrane, and they float up to the surface, and that's how you get your foam. Yes, my little science geek. But how do we get the carbonation into the beer? Well, carbonation is a natural byproduct of fermentation, but most brewers will give the beer a bit of a top up before it leaves the brewery. Now, to illustrate how easy it is to carbonate a beverage, I'm going to ask you, Matt, to demonstrate with the soda stream. It's my time to shine. So Matt has this bottle of water, which is currently not carbonated. He is threading it onto the machine to create a nice seal. Ooh. And on the back of the machine, there is a canister of carbon dioxide. So to release that carbonation into the water, I'm going to ask you to just press that button right there. All right. Nice. So you can Ooh. see that carbonation has dissolved right into the water, and I bet you could put a little bit more in there if you wanted yeah? to. Yeah? Okay, let's do it. Ooh. Okay, I think it's done. <laughs> yes. So you've probably put about 0.8 volume of carbonation in there, and we're talking about volumes of carbonation. That's the amount of carbonation in the liquid. And it's a pretty straightforward measure. Let's say this is one liter of water right here. Mm -hmm. So if I take one liter of carbon dioxide and to solve it into that liter of water, I will have one volume of carbon dioxide. Ah, uh, yes. And then if I take a second liter of carbon dioxide and dissolve it into that same water... Let me guess. Two. Very good. I'm so smart. So most commercial beers that are packaged have two to three volumes of carbon dioxide. We say they're super saturated. Super saturated. And here's an interesting thing about beer. It likes to hold on to that saturation, okay. hold on to that carbonation. If I pour the beer very, very gently like this, not only am I not releasing the foam, but I am trapping those two to three volumes of CO2 in the beer. It is super saturated with this carbonation. If you drink that beer, you're gonna drink all that carbonation and you're gonna feel bloated. And that is not cute. Not cute. Mm -hmm. Fortunately for us, Matt has a trick to get the carbonation out of the beer. Yes, and let me show you that trick from my back pocket. Okay, so working as a server, uh, sometimes when you get busy and you've ordered drinks and they're sitting on the bar, you don't get to them quite quick enough. So yeah. it sits and then it becomes this. It looks like that. And you don't want to drop that off to a table. It doesn't look nice. Um, it looks flat and boring. So um, we're going to use chopsticks for this. Uh, but you just want to give it a little bit of a stir. And just like magic, Girl, you've got a freshly poured beer. Voila. Mm -hmm. I'm actually familiar with this trick. It's something we also do in photo shoots when the beer has been sitting around for too long and we want it to look good for the camera. Yes, so we're exposing all the secrets today. Now, if you want to get those two to three volumes of CO2 out of your beer, one thing you can certainly do is use chopsticks. Chopstick method, or you can use one of these five fabulous products that are designed specifically to give you the perfect foam. 
Absolutely. Mm -hmm. But the most straightforward way to get those two to three volumes of carbonation out of your beer and to burst it out into foam is by pouring it properly. And Matt, I think we've earned ourselves a beer today. I think we have. We've worked very hard. Go. Yes. Synchronized pours. Get that right. Perfect pour. On point. Yes. I can't wait to drink this. That makes two of us. Yes. Cheers. Mmm. Refreshing. Oh. To find out more about the perfect pour and other aspects of beer, you can pick up a copy of my book. And make sure to check out our next video when we start with our product reviews. And we're going to start with this bad boy right here next time. So make sure you check that out. See you then. Bye. Bye.